Today on In The Woodyard, we're looking at two ways to extract your oil for changing oil in your small engines. We're gonna change oil on the Easton Made Ultra, on the Honda engine, and then we're gonna change some oil over here on the Toro lawnmower. Here we go. That's good, that's good, that's good. So what we're gonna do is we got two kinds of oil here. The good stuff, this uh, mobile one, it's 10W30, is going into the uh, Honda engine because I've had uh, oil in here from when it was cold, I had it's either five weight or zero weight that I had and for ease of starting in the winter time and it needs to be changed. So we're gonna change it now that it's getting warm out. And then we've got some crappy oil here that we have, we're gonna put into the uh, Toro lawnmower because we got a new one for at home and that neat oil needs to be changed next. We're gonna sell that more because it's not a real good mower. We got a better, newer, faster, cooler mower. So we're gonna change some oil. So the first thing I'm gonna do is we're gonna start it and uh, warm up the engine so the oil is nice and uh, warm and it drains better. So I'm here with my oldest son today, and he is the mechanic in the family, not me. He's the one that takes engines apart and put them back together. I want nothing to do with that. And he does a lot of little engine repair and big engine repair, and he has some uh, oil extractors. There's a Liquivac, right? And yes. And what is this here? Well, this is I got this for Christmas from you, actually, oh, and Mom. Uh, yep, exactly. He, that's <laughs> just, he wasn't exactly involved in the shopping of that. No, I just hand my wife the money, and she buys stuff. Yeah. Um, and as soon as I opened it, he's like, oh, we got to do a video on that. It is pretty cool. So, because um, I've, I've had this, which is a Liquivac. This was $44 a couple of years ago. Uh, it's got a plastic container. You pump it up and it, you know, through vacuum sucks the oil out like we're going to be doing shortly here. But this one is, eh, it's, it's okay. It's made of plastic uh, and metal's always better than plastic. All right, so this is the top cider, which is uh, made in the US of A here, which is made of uh, metal. Made in... Made in, what does it say right there? Made US, in America. Yes, US made of A. America. I actually believe the Liquivac was also made in the US of A, but this one's made of metal. So this one is similar in the fact that it has a pump that you put on this container here, which is like an old style. Yeah, I like the old style gas cans. Guys, you're gonna like this, this is neat. So this goes on here like so. And we haven't used it yet. I've been saving it because as soon as I opened it, he wanted to do a video on it. That's okay, because I haven't had to change oil yet, because the only thing I had... Because normally I use this for my small engine stuff. Um, actually, the whole reason I got the Liquivac was uh, to improve my marriage, um, because trying to change the oil on my previous hand-me-down Toro mower that he gave me that was near death that I nursed from... 2017 to 2021 or 22 or 21 I think that uh, needed some TLC but I would have to change the so oil. it's got caps and it's got the usable caps. So. Yes. So and you got the gaskets in. it comes with I see there. That's neat. Yeah. So this just goes on like so. So I take those gaskets, and put my cap in here. Where'd that one go? Put that in there. And so then it's got these two pieces of hosing, which is exactly the same concept as the other one. Any in an Audi? Well, yeah, because what basically what you do is you put this on top of here to nice increase the size that? of it. Oh, okay. So it's a sizing tool. Basically, so it fits snugly. So that's a flexible hose, whereas the other one is just PVC. Um, well, yeah, I mean, they're a little bit thicker. The, uh, the more flexible, clear one goes closer in. Let me make sure I'm doing this right. This is how the other one is, I'm just assuming. And you know what happens when you assume. So what are you pushing that on so far for? I'm trying to make it flush with this, is what you want to do. Why is that? Uh, I don't know, it's just how I've always done it. Take the spacer. So this is the the other one from the, uh, the Liquivac, plastic one, yep. Liquivac, and that's what it needs to look like. So it's it takes it's a little bit of a gasket is what it becomes. So you yeah, can go over the top of that. It so takes a little good. bit of effort. 
you need to stretch that. I've got a tool I probably could shove in there and widen that out for you. Unless you don't want to stretch it too much though because you want it to seal. Yeah. Once you get it in there, it's fine. It's just... Getting it started looks like. If I remember correctly, I used the needle nose last time. Yeah, you need to open that up. Why don't you go get one? All right, so through the magic of editing, we now have it in there. Basically, same concept as the other one. Just had to give it a little bit of force. Put this on like so. Why don't we do this? Pick that thing out. Put it on the metal. There you go. Now you got a solid work surface instead of a cardboard box. See, I know something. Yeah. Not a lot, but something. And then do you leave that connected all the time? Or you take it apart every time. I mean, once you get oil on it. it might yeah, work once you get oil on it. Plus, you can always just take the cap off right. with it still That's attached. What I would do. I'd take oh. the cap and leave it on, and then uh, just wipe it off. And there you go. Now you're getting it on. So right about now, guys are typing, how much was it? Where did you get it? I don't know. It was a gift. However, I know um, when I make my Christmas list, I use Granger and I use Northern Tool. I would like to say it came from Granger, but I will say this. It will be in a link in the description below. We'll figure it out. Yeah. Because I'm, well, no, I mean, I'm the one that put the link, puts the links in there, which I want a point. <laughs> um, no. None of those are sponsored links. As of uh, March 21st, 2021, or 22, as of filming this today, none of them have been sponsored link. If it's a paid promotion, it's in the uh, subject bar of, of the video frame. But in any video, if there is a piece of equipment that we're covering, or uh, actually really if it's a piece of equipment, okay. or typically, I think for the tools, Firewood Fest, tools I, and supplies, yeah, like that. I'll always try and put a link because it's me that's doing all the, or 90% of the descriptions and typing and the uploading and tagging. If you look, any of the Easton made stuff, any of the, uh, the Husqvarna stuff or the steel stuff, I always try and put a link to the exact product page within the uh, description of the video. So if you ever want to know more about any of the pieces in there, it'll take you to the manufacturer site. Again, not a sponsored link, just a straight manufacturer site uh, link for it. So I'll make sure there's a link in the description for this and this here. I think the two that have been in there up to this point were uh, the chain sharpener and, and the boots. And the boots, and then obviously the Easton made uh, Well, yeah, yeah. Uh, 22 MB wood processor. Those are the only things that have been really just given to me to use. Yeah. Um, otherwise, it's all stuff I've bought and tried. So. so the thing that's the difference between the top cider and the Liquivac, the top cider here, as you can see, there's no valve. Basically, you pump it up and, you know, we'd have vacuum going at this point. So to stop it, so here, you're stuck on me. So to stop it, there's this plastic clip here, or the one plastic part on there, and you just pinch down on that and it pinches it. That is cool. So that now I can go and pump it to generate vacuum. Now it did say um, 30 to 40 times is what you want oh, to pump it. it right here, yeah. pump 30 to 40, 30 40 times. times. Do not pump it if there's already liquid in it because that number would not be accurate because obviously your volume that you're pumping is not going to be the same for that. But we'll pump it 30 to 40 times here. We'll do 30 because it's just a small engine. Yeah. I have used the Liquivac before for transmission fluid. Yeah. So, you know, there you're talking maybe anywhere from, if you're just doing a, 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 a change in fill versus a whole flush, five, quarter, three to four quarts, maybe for that, maybe up to six or seven or eight. But when you do a, I can hear it sucking just a little bit, probably because the seals were powdered. So they're not- Oh, this is not on tape. No, but it's, it's, it's because the seals are powdered. So. Let's do this. Um, let's, which one do you want to change first? Which one do you think is hotter? I ran that earlier, so. Let's do the log splitter first. Okay. All right, so now at the engines, you want to get them warm, but not hot. Um, I have made the mistake of doing it scalding hot and the plastic hose on the Liquivac got very um So we just melty. ran the engines for like, what, a minute? Minute, two minutes. It's two to three minutes is what it's looking for. So. 
We'll set you're this gonna down. You're going to go right into the fill hole is what you're going to yep, do. Yep, so right here where your dipstick is, I'm going to clean off the schmutz before we open it so you don't get it in there. I can tell you uh, are just definitely as anal as me on mine. <laughs> There's a bunch on top. There. That's sarcasm, but by yeah, the way. I, I uh, haven't changed it since I don't know middle of winter or something like that. So, but I haven't split a lot in that time. I just know that it's time to change it anyway because of the warm weather we got coming now. Yeah. Now that we're starting to have some decent weather, we're we're trying to get some of this stuff done uh, to get prepared for summer splitting. It might be kind of while well, you're around a hill, so it won't drain out on you. So go ahead and let her rip. Holy smokes, look at that. It's taken off. You didn't even open it up yet, did you? I just opened it. Oh, you opened it? Yep, so now it's going to drain that out. And the whole reason for doing it this way is you get more of the oil out and you just stay cleaner. And, yeah. And uh, it works for other other things, like you said, other liquids. Yeah, you can use it for transmission fluid, for oil, any of that. Oh. Uh, well, I was going to say, do we need to open up the other hole so that you get some... Uh, it should be fine, but we'll okay, have to go a little so bit more. Let's open a little bit. Yeah, it's cracked. This will be remember to tighten it back up. So, this will take a little bit, probably 8 to 10 minutes to drain it fully, but... So, versus taking the drain plug out... In this case, not as you know, it's not going to give you that much of an advantage because this is so easy to tip out. The lawnmower is where it'll be a little bit easier. You'll where, see where you can't get a good uh, access to the drain plug, or if you're doing an engine that's hard to get at, it might be a little easier too. Or you get more complete drainage. Yeah. Pump again. I get the holes going. Yeah, we're getting towards the end now. It's starting to gurgle. I'm just giving a little bit more. I'm amazed at, at uh, how, how, how well it flows. You can feel the hose. Is it warm? That it's oh, yeah. It's warm. It's, it's not hot, but it's warm. Is it on a... Sometimes... Oh, here we go. Now it's sucking. Now you can see the hose. And it's right at the bottom. Now, do you think you get it any cleaner doing this versus... Um, there's a couple videos that I'll link to in the description below that talk about um, if you get more or less, actually one of them specifically, uh, that they do uh, Volkswagen, Audi, uh, German car stuff that I watched some of their videos from, and they did a test where they had something similar to this. There's a couple different brands um, where basically they warmed up the engine, uh, stuck it on a dipstick tube, ran it, let it sit for 10-15 minutes, suck all the oil out. When it stopped sucking, they put the dipstick back in, put it up on the lift, and then opened the drain plug to see if anything came out. And basically, maybe a, a thimble, maybe half of a Dixie cup came out, if that. So, in reality, it gets a majority of it. Again, if you really want to be thorough, you know, heat it up, drain plug. But for just changes like this, it's a little bit easier. And it's sucking. Looks like maple syrup. Yeah, it wasn't that dirty. No, it wasn't too bad. I, I know it, it didn't really need to be changed. Um, but like I said, it's, it's more of the getting the summer weight oil in here now versus the winter stuff that I had in there. I'm trying to get, because it seems like there's a little bit down here still. I always say that oil is cheap, engines are expensive. I don't care if I change it more often than I should. I'd rather have clean oil in it because it's <laughs> oil is not expensive. And being that this machine has made the last 10 lifetimes, I might as well keep the engine running. Yeah. And one of the things we were just talking about when we turned the camera off for a second is that you could probably siphon gas with this, but it specifically says don't. Do not use any flammable liquids, yeah. Right. Number one, because the, the hose is probably wood. Not rated for that, yeah. Get rated for it. Plus, obviously, it's, not, safe. it's not, not a safe thing to do, especially if it's someone else's car. It's a little illegal. Yes. <laughs> so typically what I do when I'm done with... Uh, there's a little bit in there. So typically when I'm done with it at home, I have a basketball hoop in my driveway. I take a zip tie and I zip tie the top part up to the basketball hoop. But we'll improvise here just to let it drain. Just tie a knot and hit up, yep. up on top here. I'm gonna do this here. There you go. 
Look at that. You must be smart. It must be that good breeding. Yeah. <laughs> but we'll let it drain in then. Put this downhill. Then you take the pressure off inside. Uh, well, this one, there's no pressure because there's no, the. it's just this right here. So this is open right now. So I'm just going to pump it just a little bit. Yeah, so that will suck the rest of it in. So that is the top cider. Now we'll take my Liquivac here. Take this off. one you have used before. This one I have used before. I use this one every season at the beginning of the summer and at the fall when I switch out my snow blower and lawnmower for storage and not. This one's a little bit different, like I was saying, is this right here effectively acts as that clip. So right now it's closed. That's open, so you can hear there's a little bit of vacuum there. So I'm gonna close it. And I'll take this, you unscrew it here, and I'll pump it up probably about 25 times. So I'm stopping here because you can already see it kind of got a little bit narrower there. Yeah, yeah. it's sucking. Well, and the thing is, when it gets hot, then it really gets um, uh, I can see malleable. for the lawnmower, it's be nice because there's really no really easy well, way to drain your oil. And out. this is what I was saying earlier about it saving my marriage because previously... You would just spill it all over on there? No, no. I would ask for help, and because I'm your son, I would give no direction and then get upset and confusing when I'm like, no, do it this way, or, oh, here, you can see it's really sucking yeah, down now i would since i'm your son i was saying you know i would basically be like no that this and i can't give direction because it's genetic i'm pretty sure <laughs> and whereas now instead of having to grab the mower on both ends and tip it into a container all you do is just get it on its side and then here i'll let this loose here i'll stand here and you can let go of that. there you go and there now it's flowing there it comes oh yeah that's dirty that's dirty that looks like cement well, I didn't change it before the end of the season, which is shame on me, but I didn't have time with peace and love, as Ringo would say, clip yeah. here. That is that is some dirty oil. Yeah. Well, good, yeah, because we're going to sell this um, because my wife has had this. I say my wife because I don't mow lawn at home. She does it because she likes to. And uh, we're going to sell this because uh, for her birthday, which just happened, my eldest son here bought her a brand new mower. What'd you buy her? Honda HRN 216 VLA. Same one I have at home because she wanted electric start. That way when you get in the summer where it's hot, you don't get heat soak where you can't restart it then because uh, she has a little bit of an issue restarting it. So getting rid of this one because this one, once you turn it off in the summer, it's off for probably about two or three hours. It, it, no matter how much hard uh, you pull on it, how much you prime it, it doesn't restart. But, yeah, and even, you don't necessarily have to tip it to the side. I just do this, that way we get uh, All the, oil, yeah. the majority of it. Well, and the bad thing I found whenever I changed oil on a lawnmower in the past, <clears throat> you tip it over, and usually because it needs to be changed really bad, and it's the day when you're gonna mow the lawn, you tip it over you and flooded. it's flooded. Yep. And then you gotta open everything up to try to let all the gas evaporate, and yeah, it's, it's just better, I guess, this way. It makes sense. That well, we can... and the other usage for this is, let's say you have an outboard motor or something that right. you can't tip over easily. That's what this is useful for. That way you don't have to do it. Now, your splitter, like I said, easily accessible. Right. Um, but maybe with your uh, massive uh, processor. So typically what I'll do is I'll take it and I'll tip it back, even back into the left. Okay. Let it down and then we'll tip it back over once just to let it slosh anything else over. Is it down at the bottom? The oil's right here, so it's... Oh, I think... Whereas this is a one-person affair, previously trying to tip it over. You can do it yourself, yeah. but if you don't empty the gas, you're going to flood it. You're going to have gas everywhere. Right. You're going to knock the mower over, and then... Uh, with any luck, you'll knock over your pan you were draining your oil into as well. Yeah. I speak from experience. So, we'll just let that gargle a little bit. Seems like it's actually done, so we'll take this out. 
It's like a catheter. Uh, kind of like that. Not that I have any experience. No. <laughs> I've been told. Clean that off. And then you're gonna pick up the hose and then pump it some more? Um, yeah, I'll probably do the same thing as this one here. Tripod works pretty good for that. Now, what I'll do is I'll close the valve here first. We'll build a little bit of pressure. Let's move it all the way back out here and we'll let that drain when we put new oil in. So, for the Toro over here, Walmart's finest, Supertech, which actually I've used and this mower was a thrift shop, thrift shop special. I've used it previously for this because it's just fine for its purpose. It is the API SJ um, classification it calls for, so. And the nice thing about it is this engine needs so specifically, what is it, 20 fluid ounces? Well, look at that. This is 20 fluid ounces. So you know what that means? I can just pour the whole thing in and be done. If you were to overfill it, you could suck some out with oh, yeah. the Liquivac, which I have done before when I had a, we'll call it senior moment like you. <laughs> uh, I was filling transmission fluid on a Toyota Echo I was working on and uh, I miscounted how many quarts I had grabbed out of my box and I had put one extra full quart in. So I wound up sucking a quart out this way through the transmission dipstick. And typically, because of that Liquivac, you have all your oil in there. I'll just use the old container and I'll dump the Liquivac as soon as I'm done into that because I take my oil and recycle. Actually, I take most of my oil and recycle. You get the some of the remnants of the uh, vehicle oil. Looks low. It does look low, but we're also on an incline. Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start it. I know it's 20 ounces. Right on the money right there you can see. Yeah, looks good. Now it's clear as water. Well, not that clear. No. A slight amber. It's like a maple syrup. It doesn't look like cement anymore. No, and it should start. Ready for Craigslist. Oh, so now we'll go ahead and fill up the Easton Maid. Oh, Actually, Honda. the Honda. Yeah. How much does it take? Oh, uh, totes full. Yeah, okay, yeah, you don't work like I do. <laughs> You got me referencing PDFs and torque specs can, and all that. I can, and get, I can get the uh, manual out. But I do know that I looked it up once and it was 20 some ounces. And basically when your fill, when this hole. Correct, it's, typically it's, it's right where the touching, thread is. Yeah, when it's touching that thread, it's pretty much right on. So since then I haven't really worried about it. I just fill it up until it starts coming out a little right. bit. Like, that's yeah, good. Right, whereas in a previous video, somewhere in the 400s, uh, I was here with my Honda Verse attached. Same, it's a similar concept. It's a Honda GX engine. Um, you fill it to that there. I'm out there with a measuring cup and a pipette actually measuring it to be exact. So there's a slight difference there. And for example, this funnel, it looks like you've used this with other oil, different weights of oil. I wouldn't want to contaminate that. I have different funnels for that. Uh, it was mobile one in the winter and I think I had zero. Well, at least we're keeping it in the yeah. family. And this is go slow because it's got the, the screen, screen in there. Yeah. So it, it fills pretty slow. But yes, we're using Mobile One Extended Performance, not a sponsor. Yeah, it goes real slow. You can see it just barely moves. Remember, we got the other cap open. We have to tighten that up too. Yes. 
That's pretty full. Yeah, it seems to me it was in the 20 some ounce range. Uh, 26. It's usually 22. Eight. It's usually anywhere from 20 to 26 ounces is what most what small engines what are. I remember, yeah. Somebody in the comments will know exactly to the. Uh, well, I, I could put it in the description, but yeah. I can get the manuals right over there inside that thermos. And, uh, Why is it in a thermos? Is it, does it come like that? Yeah, there's okay. nobody calls in the thermos. All small engine uh, equipment now comes like that. They have those little attached thermoses so that when you need it, it's right there. Gotcha. Which is kind of nice. Um, I just have a folder most, on my phone, but yeah. most guys never take a look. Yes. I only do if I need to look. We're getting close. We've put about just about 20 ounces in now. When this goes in, let's go ahead and pull out your... It's not, yeah, it's not, oh yeah, they can still see it draining, so. Is it going? It's still not done. Yeah, you can pull it out. I can see it starting to show up there. We yeah. need to do a little yeah. bit more. I think it's 26 ounces, if I remember right. I'm just, that's probably going to be good. With my luck, it'll be too much. I know it was less than a quart. I remember that, so. So, we filled up our oil, put our dipstick in. Look at that, we got oil. Yep. So we're up to the fill level there, and uh, while we we're doing that, I was having a side conversation asking him about his other maintenance, because... I haven't, changed, I haven't checked up the air filter in months, probably since last spring. Oh, uh, that's dirty. And he said, oh, I don't, I don't need an, oil, an air filter. And this is how I know he's never owned a German vehicle, because... Um, yeah, we need to clean that. Let's take that. Take it off. That's, you have... That's nasty. Yeah, you, you don't well, do... this is the pre-filter. It's, it's uh, one of those... Uh -huh foam things yeah I, this is where i can tell i descend from my mother's yeah, side not my father's side on some things yeah just trying to wrap mean? anything in there yeah get yeah, that away yeah. from the, the yeah it's bad thing. that's bad so we'll take off the uh the sock thing there oh my god yeah that's bad well i've done a lot of splitting i've done a thousand cords but i know i took it off last year and pounded it out yeah and it wasn't too bad see the filter on the inside is actually not bad at all not bad at all. It's terrible. No. Yeah, it's not bad at all. Are we going to wash this? That needs... To be washed. Cleansing, yes. We need to wash <laughs> Cleansing is uh, putting it lightly. It needs to... Yeah, we'll take that in with some hot soapy water and Dawn and we'll clean that baby up. But yeah, that is your oil change. All right, so then when you're all done, I just, I'll take my hoses here. Now you could just take this down to your local recycling center or auto zone or wherever you get rid of waste oil. Um, but typically what I do is I'll take, when I use the Liquivac, I just take the nozzle off here. This just comes off like so. There's an O-ring in there you wanna make sure you get that seals it. And then it typically. Kind of, the O-ring's kinda of twisted, you see. Know. Yeah. Hmm. We'll see how this works without a funnel. Normally I use a funnel. I am unprepared. There's not much in there. <laughs> yeah, I want a funnel. Give me your funnel. Okay. Since you don't seem to care about it and its cleanliness. Well, it's, I mean, I, I wiped it out. It's just that there's always residue. Oh yeah, there's the cement. It's got a little bit of metallic sheen to it. Yeah, it's a nice stuff. Take this off the top side of here. There's where it made our vacuum. Let's set that over here. And here, you can kind of see the oil in there. Yep. We'll take our funnel, and this, we're not going to pour all of it in. I need to hold the funnel. Yeah, I think I, I got it. it. Pour that in and we'll let it drain. Yeah, it's not nearly as dirty as this lawnmower oil. No, no. But we hadn't been into that long, but it's, I'm still glad we're changing it that way and we're good. Yeah, see, look, you can see there it's... Yeah, it's actually not dirty at all. I mean, it's not... Not dirty at all, my okay. God. It's not new, but it's not, not, not like cement like that other stuff was. Uh, let's give them, I'm breaking out in hives. <laughs> hey, you want me to tilt it? That should be good. We don't have that much space left in this container. Oh, okay. 
And then, because it's you, you can, you don't even necessarily need to use it at the recycling center. However, please do dispose of your oil properly, as I do. Um, you can just use it right on your uh, slide there. Yeah. Is that, is that the proper term? Rails, push plate. Slide rails. rail? Slide rails, I don't know. That's what I call them. The rails at the push plate. So, How much do you use typically? Because I know I give you... It a quarter lasts me a long time. Oh, so you're telling me I should stop giving you my five gallon jugs? No, I yeah, I, a gallon. Um, I shouldn't say that a gallon. Um, I would say maybe three or four quarts a year. I just squirt it on occasionally as I'm using it. Yeah. Figure it can't hurt. You better go now, now. <laughs> I was trying to time it. I don't want this to turn into another uh, EPA super fun site. Super fun site, yes. Yeah. You know what we're gonna do with this here? We're gonna be r real ginger like. There you go. That's good. Just like that. That's yeah. Good. When I take my recycling oil to the recycling site, I try and give them at least to the top there so they don't start spilling immediately. Do they open them up and dump them out and give you containers back? They... No, so when I take mine, my local municipality, when they take them, they take um, the whole container. You could uh, show up with something like the top side or the Liquivac if you want, but as I am genetically related to you, I uh, despise waiting. So what I do is I load up a, a cardboard box with all of my um, containers like this that I've filled up and they just take it and they dump it and then they also recycle the plastic containers because those plastic containers can be reused again right. but it just can't go like in your recycling bin so here we uh, have all our oil we took out and we can kind of see there's some metal flakes in there I think it came from the Liquivac because I have changed a number of sickly mowers with it specifically his old one there you can yeah, see you can some see of it metal fragments yeah you get to focus but i mean the uh suctioning out yeah does it get as much as the drain plug it gets i think differently because you're getting suction as you're moving that tube around in different areas in the crankcase whereas you know with these small engines that don't have oil pumps it's just splash lubrication the suction you know you get a little bit of both on my snowblower, which does have a drain plug similar to your GX, I'll do uh, one of me one of my oil changes in the season with the suction, and one by using the drain plug. That way, I get um, you know a lot of the contamination out of there. Again, you know, some small engines may never ever see an oil change in their life, and they just continue to burn oil. <laughs> this might just be me being anal retentive, but you know, changing it this way especially in the case of the lawnmower it's a lot easier than having to tip the whole thing over right. and if you have something like a boat outboard motor or something like that you want to suction the oil out works great for that too so. so i did go in and i i took hot water and some nice dishwashing dawn soap and hot water and i cleaned up the air filter the pre-filter filter so we're going to put that back on right now so here did you wipe that off the top mm -hmm. of it? okay good size clean yeah so the in the, the inside filters is good dirty it, it is not dirty. It's dirty. I would like to introduce you to the service manual from my Volkswagen Golf that okay. talks about how you need to change all of these various items every 5,000, 10,000, 30,000 miles. 10, 10, 30, miles. Yeah. yeah. You clearly have not owned a... Every gas, every gas fill change. Well, you always well, wipe all that off. Too. Yeah. Get this wing nut up. Yeah, just take that. I need more hands. And, uh, I'll hold something while you do that. There you go. Just trying not to show anything down the hole there, please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just How? Clean it away from there. <laughs> but, I know. Well just pour it, so I just didn't. You know, you want to be away from the hole. Um, how uh, how many hours do you think you have on the GX on this? I've probably split. If I just was to, to guess, a thousand face cords. So divide three into that. So three hundred ish more. I do about a full cord an hour, so I would say 350 maybe, yeah. would be my guess. Um, all I know is that it's been excellent and runs good, starts good. And the only time I've ever had a problem is when it was uh, 25 below a couple times. I actually had to put a space heater and a, I put a, uh, a heat gun actually on it with a blanket over it and I let it run for like 15 minutes and it started right up. 
Um, and once I got started, it was fine. But other than that, it's been bulletproof. It's been just an excellent engine. And I know this is what everybody wants are the Honda engines, even though you can't well, get them anymore. And, and that's actually that. yep. So that, that's actually a, a, a topic of conversation currently with the lawnmower i was trying to get a commercial grade one i can't remember the exact model but it has a gx engine right, um nice. yep and so last year when my mower i had from you previously spectacularly exploded in a shower of literally sparks when the rings and the piston continued to eat itself on labor day i had to get a mower so i ordered a HRN 216 VLA, which is the consumer one, which uses a GC series uh, Honda engine, I, I think, if I remember correctly. There's three tiers. GX is basically the most expensive, best one, and it has a metal um, camshaft for the lobes to spin on, whereas the uh, cheaper ones have a plastic one. Nothing wrong with the plastic one. It's obviously engineered to uh, last in that uh, condition, but the mowers right now are almost, uh, as of today in 2022, unobtainium to get with the GX engine. So, I mean, that's why Easton Mate has had to switch to different engines and other well, manufacturers have had to. Yeah. There's just no GX engines. The guy at the shop told you, you can't get them. Yeah. Yeah, they, they, 2024 is the order date right now, two years out, to get a commercial uh, Honda mower because they have prioritized GX engines going into the contracts that they have for things like this or specifically larger contracts like pressure washers, things like that, that they have to uh, fulfill those orders for. So the GX engines are just very hard to come by right now. Right. So we got that done. It's ready to fly again. Now I can do another thousand, say, another thousand face cords. You want to start it up? <laughs> Yeah, go ahead, crank her up, and I'll crank her up here, and shouldn't need to choke it. It runs again! That's it for today, folks. Hit some buttons, you know what to do tomorrow. I'll be back in the woodyard doing more work. You know what to do between now and then. Go to my channel, watch some of the 700 videos waiting there for you. That's it for today, folks. Good night to who? Irene. Mm -hmm.